Michael Phillips. I'm bringing you the coffee for the cappuccino challenge. We have coffee coming to you from Ellen Hirto, Guatemala, roasted up by Momos in South Korea. Various processes for Pacamara and Bourbon variety trees. It's gonna be tasting like a little bit of caramel, and brown sugar, some cocoa. Absolutely delicious. Good luck. Yep. Uh, welcome to the World Coffee Events World Barista Championship All Stars. Brought to you today by myself, Stephen Layton, and my good friend, Mr. Peter Giuliano. Hello. Um, what we're going to be doing now is a mystery box challenge, and this time it's the cappuccino challenge. This is going to be a chance for you guys to come up here and taste cappuccinos from two World Barista Champions. We have the current World Barista Champion, Mr. Pete Licata, oh, Mr. from Pete Licata. the USA. Hello. Go USA. Hi everyone. And we have so Mr. James Hoffman from the United Kingdom, 2007. 2000. Lucky, lucky Jim 7, 2007. I never, Indeed, I never, right? It's just a coincidence. Yeah. All right. So the way this works is these two barista champions will be going head to head, um, working with making cappuccinos out of a mystery coffee. So um, what will happen is a, we will select a uh, captain of the spoons who is the tasting captain of the competition. They will be in charge of holding this small pitcher filled with small spoons. Those spoons will be used to taste the uh, beverage, the two competing cappuccinos, and will also be used okay. to cast your vote. Each of, these, um, each of these baristas will be presented with a coffee that they have never worked with before, and they will have 10 minutes to do what's called dialing it in. And then what happens after the 10 minutes? So after the 10 minutes, the captain of the spoons will make sure that it. everybody has a spoon. Thank you. And you'll come up and taste. If you prefer the cappuccino of Mr. Licarda over there, you will place it like so. If you like the cappuccino of Mr. Hoffman, you shall place it like so. The more noise, the better, because it scares them. They don't know where it's gone. But before we do that, we need our captain of the spoons. Do we have any volunteers for captain? Oh, Mr. Stephanos. So, Stephanos will be captain of the spoons. If you wish to take part and taste these cappuccinos, please take one of the spoons. Um, Stephanos will also be lucky enough to taste the first set of cappuccinos that come as the captain. Part of the honor of being captain of the spoons. Indeed, indeed. So we'll also be getting his opinion as well. One of the other honors of being a captain of the spoons is the captain gets to be in charge of choosing the coffee. So, so Stephanos, oh, hey, how are you? So we're going to have four boxes appear on the screen, Stephanos. I need you to choose one of the boxes, either one, two, three, or four. Oh, it looks like it's already gone through. Oh, oops. You must have said four too loud. I must have said four too loud. <laughs> Can we say four, Stephanos? Is that okay? Yes, four. So four, number four yes. is... <laughs> it's going to be a big surprise. It's a question now. So number four is... Hey, Guatemala, Fink Allen Herto from Momos Coffee. Where's Momos? Do you know? I do not know, but I think we're going to have a little video. Soul. Oh, it looks like we're not going to have a video. But a coffee from Guatemala, um, a farm that we both know extremely well. Absolutely. Fink Allen Herto, it's itself a, a champion farm, if you will. Having, performing better than any farm in history in the uh, Cup of Excellence competition. For sure, for sure. So, um, I think we have our little video here. Now. Oh, this is uh, Momo's Coffee. Do we have some sound?
uh, my colleague then was struggling not to sing. I could see you holding in the song. Yeah, I was, that's, that's right. Okay, so moment. Oh. Maybe we'll replay this um, once we get the sound issue sorted and go back. So, um, Momo's Coffee, um, I've not heard of these uh, before. Yeah, they're um, in Busan, uh, yeah. South Korea. It's so, of course, an amazing uh, sort of uh, renaissance of coffee happening in South Korea at the moment. Incredible, yes. Some incredible coffees coming from there. A, a real thirst for uh, knowledge as well in Korea, um, and uh, it's something that I've seen a lot. I've been approached by different publications that they have there to give Absolutely. interviews. Absolutely. And they're very interesting, you know, World Barista Championships. Yep. Of course, uh, having a semi finalist this year as well from Korea right. was uh, the first time that they've made semi finals, so a big deal um, there too. Right. Very polished performance as well. Uh, it's really good to see. So, uh, the farm. Ellen Herto. Right, Ellen Herto, a fantastic farm in it's the Weiwei Tenango region of uh, Western uh, Guatemala, well known for being, as, you know, I, I, look, it goes without question saying uh, Ellen Herto may be the most prize winning uh, coffee farm in history. For sure. uh, a, a, a string of number one um, prizes coming from the Cup of Excellence in, uh, in Guatemala. Spectacular coffee, just, uh, just really uh, transformed over the years. For sure, and it's also uh, a farm that's gone into the coffee shop business too, right. having their own shops in Guatemala City. Right. Um, I was lucky enough to go visit while I was there in uh, in January this year, and was blown away with the coffee experience. Oh, is that right? Um, awesome. Yeah, really, yeah. really good. So, just okay. going to um, we're just going to line up the video again, and we're going to have Mr. Mike Phillips tell us about this coffee. All right. This is Michael Phillips. I'm bringing you the coffee for the cappuccino challenge. We have coffee coming to you from Ellen Hirto, Guatemala, roasted up by Momos in South Korea. Various processes for Pacamara and Bourbon variety treats. It's going to be tasting like a little bit of caramel, brown sugar, some cocoa. Absolutely delicious. Good luck. Okay, I heard him say that there was a multiple, multiple processes here. Is that? Yeah, it says various processes, so it could have some natural processed coffee, some pulp natural, maybe some washed coffees in there. For sure, and it's also it's a double uh, varietal in there as well with Bourbon, Peabri, and oh, yeah. Pacamara. Yeah, very unusual coffee in, uh, in a variety of ways. I mean, this is a, this is a Seven very... Seven minutes remaining, so... Um, okay, yeah. so right now what's happening is these two baristas are in there Dial-in period. Dialing in is a term that we use in the uh, in the barista craft to describe the period when a barista is is trying to make the necessary adjustments to his equipment to uh, make the coffee taste its best. What what are the various things that can be adjusted, Stephen? So the variables the barista has at their fingertips is the the grind choice. So choosing between a, a coarser grind will make that espresso run quicker, and a finer grind will cause more resistance. Um, you also have um, the dose, so the dose of coffee that you're putting in the porter filter of the coffee, that will again create more resistance. Um, you also have the temperature, so unlike the World Barista Championships where the machine is at one temperature, they can also adjust temperature um, and change that. And also finally the yield of the coffee, so how much coffee we actually produce from that uh, ground coffee that goes in. This gives us uh, lots of parameters to change and lots of ability for the barista to have their own personal stamp on the coffee. That's right. And one of the things that these baristas will be doing also is sort of evaluating how this coffee is interacting with the milk. So many of those, uh, those decisions that you were talking about, temperature um, and, uh, and dosage, also apply to the amount and, and way that they're going to prepare the milk. Sure. So you can maximize the sweetness of milk by heating it to the to right temperature. You can make decisions about how much air to incorporate in it um, when you're steaming it. And these are decisions that they'll make partially based on their own style and partially based on the style of the coffee in order to try to create the most, most cohesive, synergetic coffee possible. Sure. So these are two varietals, Peter, that are um, quite different. You have the Pacamara, Pacamara. which is the large size bean coming from the Pacas and the Maragajipe, 
uh, being brought together in this giant bean kind of style. Right. But then also you have the Bourbon Peabry, which is a much smaller, tinier bean. It occurs in around about 5 to 10% of Bourbon naturally, and this is where the uh, coffee cherry normally has two seeds in. Um, and this, this piston that gives the seed misfires, and you end up with just one seed right. inside the cherry, which is much smaller, much rounder. How right. do you think that's going to affect the dialing in process, Peter? Well, you know, this I would expect this coffee to be uh, um, sort of all over the place in terms of its density. Yeah. Um, you know, the Margo Hipe uh, or, uh, or Pacamara variety, variety is going to be a much larger bean and it may have a smaller, uh, a, a, a lower density than uh, the more dense, more intense pea berries of the, uh, of the other variety. Yeah, you can see there. If we get there. our camera guy, um, Mr. Cameraman, can we get a shot of those? So we have the Peabury variety, which is the much smaller one on the left, on my left, and then to, the, to, to your right and to, to your left, you have the larger Pacamara, uh, which is a much larger bean, um, and you can see the differences there. So when these guys are grinding, this is going to make a huge difference um, to the way, the density of the bean and the way that they're going to work with them. I do not envy them at all. I think no, this is going to be. Challenge. I would bet that this is going to be a very, very challenging coffee to work with, but probably extraordinary if you get it if you get it right. That's one exactly of those. right. Nothing comes easy, and when you put that extra work in with something like this, I'm really excited to try ah, this. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the milk a little bit in this challenge. With uh, only three minutes remaining in the uh, in the prep period, the milk comes to us from Ray Capuccio, which is uh, our milk sponsor. It's been phenomenal tasting milk. I've really enjoyed. The milk here. I didn't I have some delicious cappuccinos while being here in Italy. Like yeah. delicious. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes uh, you know, different countries have different accessibility to different kinds of milk, and uh, sometimes it can be a real challenge to get uh, delicious milk. In fact, I was doing a, an event in the States um, a, a few months ago, and the milk that we had, whether it was the season or the or something, was wrong, and we just weren't able to get sweetness hey. out of that milk. And uh, this milk, on the other hand. Um, they're getting extraordinary sweetness out of this and real cream characteristics. Um, so it seems like uh, Ray Capuccio, now I'm interested in this, I don't know the background, but Ray Capuccio, that actually means king of cappuccino. So this may be actually the milk designed for the cappuccino, which is an extraordinary thing in and of itself. For sure, for sure. And I think the thing with Barista Champions and milk, we've often seen that there's that problem when they go to competitions and finding milk. I remember the video of James when he competed in 2007 in Japan. Oh man, that milk was bad. <laughs> there's, a, there's a very funny video with Stephen Morrissey and James tasting milk and nearly crying. I don't know, on the screen behind us, uh, Pete's already prepared some cap uh, cappuccino for himself and he's actually tasting the complete beverage. Oh, so is James. They're both uh, 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 actually preparing a lunch. cappuccino and uh, with their coffee and, and uh, making some final last minute decisions about how they're going to extract it. Uh, yeah. I need to come back though. So I, I've been on a mission, Peter. I have coffee for us. All right, thank so, you. Um, okay, this may or may not be his final iteration, but it's, it's delicious, whatever it is. For sure, it's definitely in the right ballpark. So we have uh, just over a minute left, guys, until we're going to be starting. So uh, yeah, one minute and 10 seconds. Um, but yeah, it's um, I kind of I've been enjoying these cappuccinos just because the audience gets a chance to come up and interact with Absolutely. the baristas. Um, something that just doesn't happen in competition. No, that's um, right. It's, it's, I'd love to see some way that we can try and incorporate this into a competition. Yeah, that'd be great. It's nice to so have. It's nice to have the feedback from the uh, from from the the customers, and you know, it's uh, we should <sighs> mention something that we've experienced up to now, which is that. It's been these tight heats between uh, these two, these two competitors. I mean, uh, there hasn't been a clear dominant winner sure. yet in these head-to-head -head champions. They've always come right down to the wire. Indeed. So we just got 20 seconds, guys. 20 seconds until we'll start. Look at that pour happening from Pete Licata, just trying to get his coffee dialed in. It's at a the beautiful last crema. Minute. Beautiful. Yeah, crema. beautiful crema. Of course, James Hoffman, uh, well known for being a fan of crema. Um, Love some crema. Yeah. <laughs> Love some natural cream coffee.
Yes. <laughs> natural cream coffee. Natural cream coffee, right? That's where we are. No, 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 because it was the, you had to put it on the machine, the, the first gadget gadgets. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's time, guys, so time is up. Ooh. All right. James, you seem comfortable and ready to uh, produce your, your competition caps. I look forward to being soundly beaten by our reigning World Bristol champion. That's true. So, Pete, that's time up if you can get yourself ready and into can position. I not, can I not pour yeah. at the table? Can we pour table side? Okay, so, uh, Captain of the Spoons, so would you report to the counter? One, two, three. Do you come and join us up here? Can I? And Gen if Gentlemen? the competitors are ready, Pete, are you ready? James, Porter Filters ready? Hello. You're at the ready? Porter ready? Yes. And start. Go. So I feel like we need some music, some like... Well, no, yeah. I start dancing when there's music. Well, exactly. Yeah, they've learned from Melbourne not to give me music. That's probably Okay, fair. so what'll happen is, is we'll be serving sets of two cappuccinos. One from Pete Licata, current reigning World Barista champion, and one from um, James Hoffman, 2007 World Barista champion. Oh, man. It's your choice um, which cappuccino you like better. If you like James' cappuccino better, you put your spoon in this uh, jar right here. I accept if you put, votes. If you like Pete's cappuccino better, you put it in this jar, and uh, at the end of the competition period, we'll weigh each jar, and the one with the heaviest jar will win. This is an extraordinary opportunity to taste coffees, because not only do you have a wor two world barista champions working the bars, they're working with authentic, approved um, espresso equipment from Nova Simonelli and Mal Koenig, being cleaned by products by Ernex, etc. Coming for you, Stefano. Kept in top shape. Keep me, make me nervous. This coffee is probably the most prize-winning coffee of all time. No pressure. So this, James is choosing to do table service here. This is really interesting. A number of the baristas right. have chosen to do that. But this is my yeah. This is my thing, right? I was more nervous then. That sort of personal interaction can really make the difference with how the coffee is perceived. He's also Pete choosing doing the, the table same. service here. Hi. You're going one at a time. I've got to do two. I'm too, I'm too old to walk that far. Another, another, uh, another person with a spoon can come up and join Stefano's at the table um, because James is already pouring his second cappuccino. Do we have somebody with a spoon who wants to come up? Because we have another one coming through. Yeah, well done, that man. Nice. I only made one for Stefanos. You gotta work faster than that, come on. Crank him out. That's James's, yeah. Are you doing doubles? Are you, are you doing doubles? Not the first one. All right. Just checking. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> I love this. That it, they was all saying, oh no, it's some fun, it's some fun, but once you get behind the machine, they turn into super competitive. It's just That's these true. raging egos must be satisfied, right? <laughs> That's true. So, let's see. So, Stefanos is uh, taking his job very seriously here. Yep. Going back again. He's obviously enjoying them. I don't, one, I don't, one for Mr. Right. Hoffman. Oh, I'll take it. One, one is all I want. James just Hoffman one. takes an early So, our lead. captain of the spoons chose um, James's. What did you like most about James's coffee? Uh, is the... It has a better uh, temperature. It's, I find a little bit uh, higher temperature in the milk of some people. Okay. But uh, right, it's, it's, it's very close. The taste is... So, Stefano saying that the temperature of the milk was slightly different. And I'm guessing you like your cappuccinos a bit cooler because you come from Greece and it's hot there. And a little bit, uh, you know, highest. Okay, so a little bit higher. So that's interesting. This comes down a lot to personal preference too. Um, so you know, some people will prefer something cooler, some will prefer Ooh. something a bit warmer. How do you like your cappuccinos, Peter? What's uh, the in of terms of temperature? I must say, I like them a little bit cooler, like uh, like Stefanos does. Um, uh, but you know, the temperature cool. aside, I like uh, hello. I like I like uh, I like texture. Yes. It's about texture for me. Like marshmallows, um, you want marshmallows. Yeah, that's what I want. I think if you're trying to make a good cappuccino with badly steamed milk, you will never ever do it. It's impossible oh, to do. Oh. It's truly impossible to do. Pete's a little bit behind on, uh, on production. 
I'm going to say um, that's because James cheated on the first one. I cheated. But, uh, I think he's also paid Raul to come and uh, put him off a little bit. He keeps going up and bothering him. Mm -hmm. So we'll pay, play catch up on this one. And then. You still want ahead. I am sorry. You got to slow it down here, man. No, no, no. There's a line. All right, there's the one for after. Enjoy so you see, Pete, my show. thinking with this table service is that these guys are baristas that like seeing their customers, giving them to them. And it's all part of that interaction of kind of handing over that personal touch. Here's your coffee. Um, I must admit, I feel very similar when I'm uh, delivering the coffee. Uh, and we got another vote for James. Oh. This is exciting. Those little brown envelopes of cash finally paying off. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, James, you did it in pounds and they only accept euros. Both of the baristas play, pouring beautiful cappuccinos too. Uh, you can see on the camera that, uh, that these baristas are, are, are putting as much effort into the appearance of the cappuccino as the, uh, as the flavor of the cappuccino. We drink um, with our eyes. We, right. Si mangio primo con gli occhi, as they say here in and Italy. widely so. That's right. So the descriptors for this coffee are brown sugar, caramel. Another vote for James just wow. went in the jug. How do you think they're adding milk to something, sweet milk, to something that has descriptors of like brown sugar, caramel? He's going to kind of be, that's going to be sweetness adding to sweetness, isn't it? Yeah, that, that is, that does happen. Of course, the, the cappuccino does have a, re, a reputation as an accessible and an even sweet drink. Um, because that, uh, that, you know, milk is something that, of course, we all drink from childhood. Um, it's an important part of the mammalian diet. And that combined, that sort of tempers um, espresso, which can be quite uh, a uh, Hello. acquired taste. So, um, but we should add, yes. you know, 75% of the world's lactose intolerant. That's true, Italy, as adults. you know, not butter eaters, oil eaters. So. I would say almost every Italian is lactose intolerant. One could argue, One could argue that the morning cappuccino ritual caps milk consumption culturally, preventing gastric distress. <laughs> I would actually genuinely believe that. Uh, James Hoffman present, preventing gastric mm. distress one cappuccino at a time. That's it. <laughs> gastric health being promoted here. There we go. James is using the two pitcher technique. That pioneered by Fritz Storm. Pioneered by Fritz, is that right? That is right, Fritz invented the two pitcher. There you go. Oh, okay. A previous World Barista Champion. And uh, that's used by baristas to, uh, to regulate uh, texture of the milk and make sure that the, the proportions of milk and foam are, are optimal when served to the, uh, to the customer. A real WBC, WBC judge. Not just a WBC judge, but a head judge too. That's They're right. They're the scary ones. <laughs> he's, he's snuck in. He's, he's going to be penalizing me on milk Oh, we got to vote for Pete. All right. I let myself down with the milk foam on that one. Oh, is that right? Let myself down. I let everyone down. <laughs> but most importantly, yourself. Most importantly, myself. <laughs> I'm disappointed in me. <laughs> So do you think Peter, our Italian hosts, are laughing at us for having cappuccinos in the afternoon? It could be. We should have programmed all the cappuccino challenges in the morning and the I espresso so. challenges in the afternoon. We are the butt of many a joke at the moment. Yeah, perhaps, uh, for next, perhaps next year we'll do, a, uh, we'll do a coffee and good spirits challenge at the end of the day Ooh. with the traditional cafe Coretto. That would be fantastic. Oh, some of the, the judges are actually conferring with one another. That's something that, that does happen at the World Barista competition. And another vote for James. Can I tell another cappuccino story? Yes, please. Oh, please do. I like to tell stories. I tell, tell some stories. So we think of it as an Italian drink, right? Correct. But it's not really theirs. The Austrians can claim the, the, the cappuccino in some form first. For it, it was a Viennese drink. The cappuccino. Right, cappuccino. Right? Which, which was nothing to do with foam. We always think of cappuccinos as foam. But the reference was, uh, was a way to describe to your waiter the exact mixture of coffee and milk 
blended to the color of the capuchin monk's robes. So a sort of Pantone reference. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, it was actually used in, uh, the, the Parisians would do it too. You could decorate a room a la capuchin, which was ah. interesting. So, in that so, brown so, color. So. Are we just muscling in? Is that, <laughs> And it, isn't it interesting, we, a lot of people are going back to that, we're t trying to get people to describe exactly what they want and expect in their drink. We see cappuccino come off menus and milk being something that can be on there and then say, how do you want your milk? So that's interesting, it's done that full circle. Yeah, I mean, it seemed to spread down into Italy. <laughs> and of course, steam ones have been around yeah. less time than espresso machines. Right. Because our early espresso machines were really rapid filter coffee brewers. If you look at the uh, like drawings or paintings of espresso, right? It was like a large cup of filter coffee. Brewed that's quickly. right. That's, that's the interesting. We go. Yeah. How many are you having? You having a few? All oh, right. That's okay. Look at this. All right. All right. Hey, that was my other cappuccino story. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. We can do Cafe Reggio next time if we want to do that one. Yes, please. Or the where the chocolate on top comes from. Well, this is something we were discussing yesterday. It was as, as something that we don't like. Um, but we didn't know how it started. We kind of... We well, the started, story... We there we go. The story is, and I think Cafe Reggio in New York, founded in 1927, they claim it as theirs, but I'm not sure it's true. You speak to the old Italian guys about it, and so the way you used to foam milk before you had a steam wand was simply to boil the milk. Right. You know, once you boil milk, it will froth up quite unpleasantly. Right. Uh, and you would do this first, and you'd then pour the coffee in the top. Oh, another now, vote for Pete. Woo. If you imagine that, that's going to leave like a big, ugly hole of coffee in your nice white foam. Right. And they would shave chocolate over the top oh, to cover the hole. To cover the hole. So it was always a kind of aesthetic garnish and never really a flavor. Another vote for Pete. Oh, I let myself go on that round for sure. How many left? Because I got two cups. Uh, I think we may have some more cups being bust. We have, Actually, two, that, we have two more spoons two, left. Yeah, two more spoons. Two more spoons left. I got two more cups. Two more cups. Are these, are these done? Yeah, they look like they're done. Do we want more, you know? I, oh, are we done with stories? I, no, more stories are good. More stories? Well, do we want to talk about the fact that, like, drinking milk and coffee for a while was considered to give you leprosy? A very old belief that you just didn't mix milk and coffee. Go back to the Arabic world, you just I wouldn't never, do it. Uh, this is an Arabic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like you don't mix milk and coffee, you get leprosy. Oh, that's right. kind of hilarious. Though, of course, the advantage of milk. Milk uh, has bitter blocking capacities. It's mostly you right. get into it because right. uh, a number of calcium-based nutrients in uh, the infant's diet are actually quite bitter. Uh, so is that the, right? Yeah, yeah, this is interesting stuff. That is so, interesting. Um, some of the properties there are, the, uh, are to block bitterness. And then, of course, there's the fact that milk's a little bit sweet, but not too sweet. Right. And this is because, obviously, we're born with an we innate like for sweetness. Uh -huh. Right. All but right. if we make the milk too sweet, a child could easily overeat. So here, the, the, the lactose is kind of just sweet enough to be nice, but not so sweet that would encourage overeating, which is a kind of interesting biological this is uh, progression. This is interesting. I got kind of into milk for a while. Yeah. I, I, uh, you know. And there's a very interesting guy in the UK, actually, called Dr. Jonathan Morris, who's basically researched the cappuccino, written a number of papers, I there believe he's go. spoken at a number of events, about the kind of the way the cappuccino was used to spread espresso through countries not used to that kind of culture. Not used to the, uh, Certainly not the, used UK. To the coffee part, right. In the 50s, the cappuccino kind of led the way of the 50s espresso bar in, in, uh, in England. Uh-huh. Anyway. But I can talk more about milk science as well, because I, I love a bit of milk science. Or we could just stop making So do we have any more no, spoons I do too. left? Has anybody else got spoons? This is it. The no, last two okay. spoons are ready to be, uh, are ready to be that's voted. That's just a leftover one. That's an extra? Yes. Okay. It's just leftover. I think that's it. Okay. I haven't made this many milk drinks in quite literally years. This is really? quite exciting for me. Yeah, I think it's so. It's very good. I can write the hell out of an email these days, but... Is this Pete? Yes. No, I think they're both James. Yeah, sure. Warm? Warm? No, this is Pete. It's not oh, good. Pete. Right. It's not good. No, no, it's not. I can tell you that now. Uh, oh, no, no, sorry. It's, it's, it's like if you're used to like a... Okay. No we may be ready for our last... Do I need to make more coffee? Votes? Uh, no, one for Pete. No more coffee. 
and one to one Pete. One for wow. Pete. That was a late run there, Pete. Okay. See, I started talking too much, and clearly my, my, my work went downhill. Let's go. So, we place them on the scales, and what we do, we give you a gram score. So, this one is 317 grams versus... 255 grams. Ooh. Our winner is Mr. Pete Licata. Come from behind. By one spoon? By one spoon. Oh. By one spoon. So Once again. Take oh. that. Back to my emails. <laughs>